Friday. Everybody talking NFL football, college football, a football-filled weekend. And no bigger spot than Las Vegas when you talk about football and the odds and betting and all of that. we got just the guy for it. We've had him on before. The Vegas Runner joins us here on Big Board Sports. Good morning, Vegas Runner. How's everything in Las Vegas th- today? Thanks for having me. Busy time out here. World Series, college football, NFL, NBA just started. So uh, definitely a, a busy time for both bettors and bookmakers alike. All right, Vegas Runner, let's get into it. Uh, week 8 NFL, one of our headline games around here is Buffalo and New England. The game's in Buffalo. The Bills are getting points. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, rest assured, that's going to be the most important game for Vegas as well uh, because of the exposure they're going to have, not just on straight bets on uh, the New England side, but a lot of teasers will be tied into them because they're at that range, that six, six and a half range. Bottom line is this, the line opens five, five and a half. It's got bet up, obviously wise guy money, but they try to get ahead of the public. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets the seven to see those same sharps grab Buffalo and try to work a middle because betting against New England, even though you'd Assume that there's a premium attached to this team and you're paying more than you should. They've continued to outperform the betting market over the last five years and again this year covering six or seven games. So it's very dangerous to bet against this team. Usually you're not getting value, but that they just haven't priced them high enough because they continue to cover. Books are definitely going to need the Buffalo side when this game kicks off. That'll be one of the biggest results for the sports books on Saturday, on Sunday, excuse me. Vegas runner, let's hop to the Jets, uh, an interesting team, and, and needless to say, and a team that really needs to run the table, most likely, if they're going to make the postseason here. They're going to Cleveland. The Browns are going to win a game at some point. The Jets are giving three here. What are your thoughts on the matchup in Cleveland? Yeah, and books aren't going to want to come off that three. It's a key number. They're afraid of getting middled. Um, So it's going to take a lot of of sharp money or public money one way or another. And speaking of bookmakers, they're getting two-way action on the the Jets-Cleveland game from the public and not much volume. Um, So that's why I don't expect this line to move too much. The the professional bettors bet the total, and they bet this game over the 43. That's why you're looking at 43 and a half. Even though the public perception is not great teams as far as you know, Cleveland goes, um, usually the, 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 the perception's factored into the price, and that's why you're looking at what appears a, a lower total um, than the Sharps think it should be. And you look at the Jets who come in on three straight unders for their last five games went under, um, but those totals were much higher. I mean, it was 49 and a half against Pittsburgh, 46 against Arizona. And uh, the definition of an efficient market is one that corrects itself. And I think you're looking at a correction here with the total a little bit lower than it should be, and that's why you see the professional bettors betting the over 43. How about that primetime game on Sunday night, Vegas runner? The Dallas Cowboys at home, minus four, I'm looking at right now, against the Eagles. Yeah, what a su- surprise for both of these teams. In fact, you want to bet this game before the season started. Uh, Dallas was a seven-point favorite. So definitely the market has shifted as far as the respect they're giving the Philadelphia Eagles. I lean Dallas, but I think that the better bet is the under in this game, and here's why. Um, if you look at Philadelphia, they're not – asking Wentz to throw the ball deep. Out of 28 attempts last week, 18 of them were for five yards or less. So they're allowing his skill position players to do their job. And then you look at defensively both these teams, 20.5, 20.9 yards per point, meaning they make teams work to score. Both Dallas and Philadelphia are over that 20 yards per point defensively. So they force you to have long drives. And then finally, if we know one thing about Dallas is they like to run the football. That chews up clock, and you could run against Philadelphia, so you should see a lot of that. And of course, primetime games, usually the the totals bumped up higher than it should be because the, the market tends to like to bet overs on these primetime games. Books know that. So they, they always put in a, a, a little higher total than it should be, and I think that's the case Sunday night. I, I, I bet under 44. It's now as low as 43. I still think there's some value there.
Vegas, Ronnie, you've, you've pretty much covered our regional teams of interest because the Giants are off this week. But from what you do and the lines and the Las Vegas hoopla out there, what other headline games are you looking at going into week eight? Yeah, I, I think the New Orleans Saints against Seattle. Um, as good as Seattle's played being 4-1 and one with a tie, you know, he can't do much better. I don't think they're that dominant Seattle team they have been in years past. And I think that record more is who they've played. I mean, their wins are against San Francisco, Miami, the Jets, the, even against Atlanta. That's a game they really probably should have lost um, if it wasn't for the missed you know, pass interference call and the two turnovers by Atlanta. Um, so I don't think Seattle's as good as they, the, 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 market believes, and I think New Orleans is better than the, the market gives them credit for. I mean, this is a team that two of their three losses have come by a combined four points, um, and I think at home, uh, you know, being one and two, their, their home Field advantage has been stronger than it's shown over the last, you know, two seasons. Um, I think you're getting some value there with the Saints. I think this is a very winnable game. I wasn't surprised when the Wise Guys took plus three and a half on New Orleans when that game came out. It's now three, even some two and a halves out there. So the Sharps agree with me. They like the Saints as well. And before I let you go, I got to ask you college football because there's seven unbeaten teams in the top 25 that are going on the road this weekend. So there's going to be some upsets. Are there any games uh, among the top 25 college football teams that stick out to you as we approach a very busy Saturday? Yeah, two games stuck out right away, and, and number one is Auburn against Ole Miss. Um, no one's playing better than Auburn right now. I mean, sure, a couple teams are, uh, but Auburn's playing some really good football, and yet no one really has given them much credit. And, and to tell you how good Auburn's playing, if you want to bet this game before the season, Mississippi was actually an eight-point favorite. Um, so Ole Miss was supposed to be a lot better than they have shown on the field, and now they come off back-to-back -back road games. Um, at Arkansas, at LSU, uh, and here comes Auburn coming in off of, you know, a big win against Arkansas by 50-plus points. Usually I don't like the back teams like that because you're paying a premium, but I think they have a ton of momentum. That's why the sharp betters also like that side. And then West Virginia against Oklahoma State. I really think this West Virginia team's a little bit overrated um, and overvalued, and the reason is because they are 6-0. and uh, But if you look at most talk to most professional betters, they don't have this team ranked as high in their power ratings. I mean, you look at the, the, the AP rankings, you know, this is a top 10 football team, but you talk to most professional betters, they don't even have West Virginia in their top 15. Um, and for me, that's when I want to take advantage of going against a team like that, where, the, you know, the perception and the market values them a lot higher than they should be. So I like the Oklahoma State side over West Virginia as well. Vegas Runner, you are the man. Our audience loves you. Uh, I guarantee you our producer, Zachary Bai, will be back in touch. Have a great weekend. Thanks for a few minutes on Big Board Sports. Pleasure's mine. Thanks for having me, guys.